We're going to be building the shelf for our wash bay to hold the furnace and the pressure washer. Okay. That's good. Rex said he had 12 minutes to help me before he had to leave for a grandkids baseball game. I've already notched these 2x4s and 2x6s so that this beam will be right against the post. Up, up. That should be it. I can't see that end down there. It's in. It's got to be. Whoop, right there, right there. Get it all the way in. Right. Well, I don't know about measuring right. I just made two notches and they happen to fit. Yeah. That's going to be all right. So here's the design I got in mind. I got, I mean, I started with this. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm going to do is I've got two by eights. I'm going to take whichever one of these is under yes. and behind. There may be two of them I have to take off. Mm -hmm. Put a two by eight on each side, sandwich that. And then I'm going to run the joists, butt it into this one and sitting on those two by eights. Sure. Put them at least every two foot. I'm still debating about whether to do it on 16s you know, or not. Your hot seat and the air compressor up there? Yeah, yeah. So first thing people are gonna ask is, how did I decide that I got enough beam and enough strength? And I'm gonna show that just a little bit later yeah. in this episode. It, yeah. we had high tech. So the tool that I used told me one of these LVL beams. So I ordered two. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Uh, and that's supposed to hold. It, it, I, I told it even where to place the, I overrated the size of the washer and I overrated the weight of the furnace and I told it where to place them. And then I said two 300 pound guys up there at the same time working on it. And then it said one beam was enough. Yep. So I says two is gonna be yep. wonderful. I decided to start with chat GPT. So I just typed in a simple question, what size LVL do I need to span 32 foot and support a 2,000 pound load? Now that's not exactly what I need, but I just wanted to see what it would say. Well, the response was sort of as I expected. It kind of lawyered up, right? It didn't give me any real answers. So then I moved over to Grok, and I asked it the very same question. Here it goes, and it starts providing me mathematical engineering calculations toward an answer says a three and a half by 18 inch LVL beam. Well, I didn't pay much attention to the actual answer because I knew this wasn't exactly what I needed, but I was encouraged because it was doing actual calculations. So I decided to get more serious. I will actually be building a shelf about 38 inches wide, 31 and a half feet long with open span on the west side and, and five posts based in eight foot intervals on the east side. And I just let it go and see what it would do. It started proposing a design and made some assumptions about what my loads would be, all very helpful. As I went through the process, I just kept providing it more and more detail of what I wanted to build and what I wanted it to support, and the output got better and better. For sake of time, I'll just enter my final description of the project. I am building a shelf in my new shop, etc., etc. You can pause if you want to see the entire detail. I'll also put this text in the description. Now, the way I got this detail was a trial and error. I kept trying a little more detail each time, and Grok would come back with additional questions. After all the detailed description, I say once it understands the design, I'll tell it about the loads. Looks like it has a good understanding. 38 inches wide, 31 and a half foot long, north to south. It has the joist correct. All looks good. So let's enter our worst case loads. You can pause if you want to read the detail, but basically a furnace, a pressure washer, a barrel of detergent, and two very large guys for maintenance purposes. And I'll tell it again that I'm still not asking my question. Okay, looks like it understands. So let's ask it the money question. What size LVL do I need? Again, it runs through all of these calculations and it settles on a two ply one and three quarter by 11 and seven eighths. So let's ask it one more question. If using the two ply one and three quarters by 11 seven eighths LVL, how much additional load can this shelf handle? After all these calculations, here's the bottom line. With the two ply 11 and seven eighths LVL, it says you're very safe. The LVL is deflection limited, not strength limited. It says I can handle an additional 4,300 pounds of evenly distributed storage. And that's in addition to 
our current load. And when it says deflection limited, it's basically saying it might sag just a little bit under load, but it's not going to fall. Tackling one of the deferred projects this morning, we're working on the power washer shelf here, or what's the other name for it, Ken? Bulkhead. Bulkhead. Got Ken here with me from Bolt on Hooks. Hey. <laughs> we'll get him a mic in a minute, but uh, we're getting started on this project. What we're doing right now is putting a couple two by eights uh, on each side here. Well, one two by eight on each side, gonna sandwich the post here. We're struggling a little bit with this, getting everything straight. We have a lot of not straight stuff to deal with. You need me shoving in, right? In a second, yes. All right, come on in. Yeah, I'm gonna shove in a quite unique way here. Give me a chance. Oh, whoa, not that much. Too much? Yeah, way too much. Right there. Our posts are bowed down through here. I knew that when we put them up, we didn't have any way to, anything to straighten them against, right? There's no wall going out this way. We're trying to make do here. We've got some ideas we're trying to make. And the LVL is like a wet noodle. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> obviously all the LVL strength is in the vertical plane here. So the horizontal plane, it'll go back, back and forth wherever it needs to go. Good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut up some of this scrap two by four, and we're gonna put it between those horizontally, and we're gonna split our seam on that because these are eight foot on center. Two of these. And so you're saying here. put those flat ways in between those yeah, two? Yeah, because you can you put your joint, your seam right there. Then you've there. got a five inch joint. However, <laughs> it'll work beautifully. Five inch yeah. joints are good in some cases. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Six and a half, actually, to be exact. <laughs> right, it's already three and a half inches wide. Beautiful. So we might not even have to cut them. And they don't have to fit perfect. No. We'll figure out our you know joint spacing in between. If they're 35 inches, we have a little bit of playing room. All right, inch calc, inch calc, 89 inches and one half divided by... I smell some rubber burning. So divided by three would leave them 29 inches apart. Let's do that by four. Yeah, he's doing some math, this, as they say in, in the so, English. So math. this inch calc app is really cool because you can work directly in inches instead of trying to convert things to decimals. So I do 89 inches and one half inches, 89 and a half inches divided by four. So 22 and three eighths inches is the spacing. So it works directly as we're, yeah. as we're thinking and not having to convert to decimal. And it's called inch calc. It's very handy to have um, in the free version, works perfectly. This is a very rare case where the Europeans were right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I agree. So 165 pounds. It's not moving much. No. Handles, you're 400 pounds pretty good. 165, man, I've lost weight. Wow. I weighed 165 once in high school. <laughs> Now, wouldn't you know it that the one place where we are a little bit concerned about water, we get the moldy side facing outwards. So now we'll wonder, did we cause that? Good enough for who it's for. Where you want me at, Tim, over there? Well, I can't, I don't have a line up here, so I can't see to. I'll give you a line. There, got that one, you're there. Got that one, you're there. Southern yellow pine gets in the, the grain of the wood and it the wood goes wherever it wants to go. That's where, yeah, it's 
Close enough. So our struggle is that this four by six post back here, right in the middle, is bowed really bad. And we really have no good way to, to bring it inward, right? We have nothing to pry against that's solid. This, this big LVL will allow it to bow in without any, uh, you know, it, it just doesn't have anything to stop it. So that's what we're trying to work around. What we've done so far is to have the Yanmar here against the, the post, pushing it in to where we want it, and we're doing all of our structural work while it's being held in. And we've got it stiffened pretty well, but we still believe that when we let off of it with the Yanmar that it will that it will pull itself back. That post has got a lot of a lot of tendency to bow. So we're gonna keep that Yanmar against it until we get the decking on the top. We think that the decking will provide a lot of structural stability. Still, will it be enough? It'll, it'll be the best we can do. So as I mentioned earlier, this is the exact structure that I told AI, Grok, that I was going to be using. We're following exactly what I said I was going to do. It said this LVL would be fine as a single LVL. So I doubled it. You happy? The corner's cut off, so you got to be over there. Okay. I'm trying to drive these timber locks in far enough that the head is below the surface. I brought it right down. <laughs> yeah, baby. Money. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, do you? That really stiffened it up. I mean, it's about quarter inch deflection is not bad. Using the fork to support this edge so it doesn't yeah. flop down as I go. So, Ken, you've uh, gotten to where you uh, work for or work with Habitat for Humanity, right? Yes, yeah, I work so. with them part time. Uh, we do a lot of uh, light construction projects, mostly. Uh, remodeling uh, bathrooms a lot, making them handicapped accessible, uh, fixing porches and railings, and maybe building ramps if we can. Um, ramps are tough to build in some locations because of the real estate you need to do an ADA compliant ramp. You need a lot of area to do it, and they're very expensive to do. Um, but we try to do that. So we're, our goal is to uh, help people help people live in their houses longer, you know, if they can stay in there, um, you know, with some help with some grab bars in the bathroom or whatever, that's, so we do that. It's a very rewarding work helping, helping people. If you were having a custom home built, you'd probably want them to glue it just to be sure though, wouldn't you? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Normally I wouldn't worry about it either, Tim, but it's, we're worrying about shear load here because we're trying to straighten that post out. I guess that's the term shear. I don't know. Somebody will correct me, I'm sure. Ready? I got it. Yep. Okay, so let's uh, center it. Is it centered on your post good? You happy with I that? I mean, I'm an inch in. You know, I'm fine. Okay. You? I mean, I'm centered, but we can favor the difference if you want. No, that's fine. I okay. got plenty. All right. So... Make sure that that's flush there in the front. We'll put a screw there. Put enough of these little screws in it, you don't need any glue. That's my theory. You just like jerking his chain. Yeah, a little of that. He does. A little of that, That's okay. Yeah. The Amish guys run along with a nailer and nail it down. 
Yeah, I'm not a big nail. I, I, I know the nail guns are all that. And well, it's just fast. It's just it, fast. And, and that's why the Amish do it. So it'll be interesting to see if our floors squeak. Yeah, when I did my house, they nailed it, but I, uh, I bought a stand-up floor screwer, so you just go around and you standing up. Did that before it, they... Belt fed. Yeah. Yeah. It just made me feel better. Okay, you're free. Fit in there, right? Looks pretty good to me. All right. Let me come up here. I'll help you. It's getting good. <laughs> I mean, getting... I can feel, feel you shake a little, little bit, bit but bounce, that's... But yeah. A little bit of bounce, but uh, for the load you're going to put on, I think you're there'll good. Be, there'll be less bounce when the machine's on it, I suspect. Now, I had to slide it. You understand I had to slide it yep, this way. Yep, to... yep, yep, yep. That's a good picture right there. I bet it is. <laughs> Money! <laughs> Look at all that glue gushing out of there. Yep, that's good. Last time climbing through here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, here we are. All done, Ken. Yeah, yeah, we got your uh, shelf built for your uh, Pressure washer? What was it you call it again? I called it a bulkhead. I don't know if I like that or not, but yeah, I don't know. It's a shelf. It's a heavy shelf. Now it pains me to admit this in front of you. I mean, really pains me. Uh oh. I feel and a compliment coming on. This was done better than what it would have been done if you hadn't been here. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was hard. <laughs> oh, that was hard. <laughs> no, I, we didn't change the design any. My design held. Yeah, it absolutely. passed the Ken, Ken inspection. Yeah, we but just... no, the 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 uh, experience that you have doing this every day now for Habitat. Yeah, well, um, is really helping. I mean, you're you're a lot more skilled in this than you were just a couple of years ago. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and this is going to hold what thousand pounds, fifteen hundred pounds. It's There's going to be uh, close to a thousand pounds out here. And then right here at the end, there's going to be the furnace, which is what a two that doesn't weigh I much, know, yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, and so again, I accounted for all of those, accounted for all those weights in the calculations, and a couple of three hundred pounders up here at the same time. A couple of three hundred pounds. No, oh, okay. I, that's what I did in the calculation. <laughs> I said that I all these you weights. Were calling me three hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah. I'm just no, kidding. I wasn't. I was yeah. not insulting. Yeah. No, I'm saying that there could potentially be a couple of large guys up here bouncing around, I see. working yeah. on something, and well, that's you, what I wanted. You doubled to. that LVL over what your best information you had said, yeah. right? So, yeah. You know what? Kenton's here, and we're gonna have a steak. Thanks for watching, everybody. What? Well, excuse me. I have to have a cheeseburger, don't I? Uh, you deserve a steak. You worked hard today. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, time with, with Tim. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Hey, when we backed the Yanmar up and released the pressure, nothing moved. It stayed straight as a string. Thanks, Ken. What a wonderful project.